entire time with you looking at this painting because my experience with trying to get people to Madison's notes, this is perhaps, which I start with, this perhaps is the dominant way that high school students and high school teachers get interested. That is, it's the visual way of, of attaching you to something going on. And if you take a look, for example, you will see the windows. The windows have curtains on it. The curtains are drawn. The light is coming in. Now, I know it's difficult and perhaps dangerous to interpret an interpretation. But during the convention, this, the, wind, the, the curtains were closed. Why? To keep down the noise. If you've ever been to Chestnut Street in Philadelphia, you know how noisy it is outside. It was very noisy in Philadelphia at that particular time. And also to maintain what is called the secrecy rule that I referred to at the beginning. Why secrecy? Those who think that the framing is a big con game uh, created by, you fill in the black, old white men, old rich white men, old slave holders who are rich white men, to throw something on us and to perpetrate oppression over us simple folks and become victims, often point to the fact of closed windows, closed curtains, all the better to shaft you, my dear. Why? Do, and there was no transparency. The whole thesis, and it was what you do things in secret behind closed doors, and then you could just add and with cigars and etc. etc. This whole image of nasty behind closed doors politics, and somehow the solution for that is draw the blinds, open things up, have transparency, and and, and, and get rid of pot politics as usual, or politics as nastiness. The case in favor of secrecy is there will be plenty of time for us to chat. There will be plenty of us time for us to go out and explain this document and have response feedback and book, blah, 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 and also alteration and amend, etc., to use the language of today. But there comes a time for honest discussion. And why I think the, the drawing of the blinds is important is not because I think there's a cover-up going on, although the windows are covered up. What's going on is a reminder that conversations just don't happen. You have to lay the foundations, like turn off your cell phones. I'm sure they said that right away. Turn off your cell phones, arrive on time, leave on time, don't speak when somebody else is speaking, don't have side conversations which imply that you're not really, in, you're not even faking interest in what the person is saying, and passing notes to each other. In other words, conversations don't just happen. You have to lay down certain parameters or rules that enhance, uh, that enhance conversation so it doesn't become shouting, interruption, advocacy. I think that's very important. What we're celebrating is not shouting. What we're celebrating is something called conversation. And a conversation, as I've pointed out, to, I can see some of you, your faces in, in, in my class, that a conversation is an unrehearsed journey. That you don't quite know where it's going. And you want to be able to get back on track. But you also want to be able to explore all kinds of avenues. What what the, if the case for transparency is the case for openness, the case against transparency is you're going to be playing to the crowd, or the cameras, or the reporters. There'll be plenty of time to do that. But now what we have to do is to build, to use a, a, a term which is very popular these days, a team. And the idea here is what you want to do is to build trust between each other without generating groupthink. Now that's tough, because once you start feeling a member of a group, there is a tendency to have groupthink. How do you, how do you do that? How do you build trust and at the same time build the opportunity to speak your mind? That, I think, is the symbolic uh, 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 meaning of the, of the curtain. But you've got two different interpretations, right? Curtain's closed, something naughty is going on. Curtain's uh, curtains closed, now we can really get serious. But on the signing, there's no need for closed curtains. 
when we're deciding the light is in. And there's something about politics that loves darkness. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, the play to the camera, oh great, we have transparency. As soon as the cameras go down, politics begins. I mean, it's part of, it is part of somehow the nature of the beast. The real test is not that you go behind closed doors, but what do you do when you go behind closed doors? And what do you come out with? And can it be challenged? The other thing is if you go to George Washington, the beauty of his intro picture is you don't have to know who they are. They'll tell you who it is. So if you click on George Washington, who is always the tallest of them all, and you click learn more, you will find a story of George Washington telling you what he's done at the convention. And if you want more information, you get a biography from the National Archives. And you can all go all the way down. Let's go back, Mitch, to the main the, the, the main page, one, one more back. That's just Washington. So you can follow for all the delegates. You can follow their biographies by getting interested in the visual presentation. If you look up front, you've got three people in a prominent position. Hamilton, Franklin, Madison. And, and also another prominent one, if you, if you go in here, you see Gouverneur Morris. Now, the point to this is that Christie has taken four people and extracted them from their delegations. The delegates were selected state by state. They could send from two delegates all the way up to seven. Pennsylvania got away with it and mentioned Frank, chose Franklin at the end, so it became eight. They could do two, from two to eight, but each state had one vote. And you could say, again, how undemocratic that the state of Massachusetts, the state of Virginia only have one vote, the state of, New, uh, of, of Georgia and the state of New Hampshire each had one vote. How undemocratic? The answer, of course, is how federal. This is a federal constitution. It's not that... It's not a one person, one vote, it is one state, one vote, regardless of size. But well, that seems unfair. But where are they coming from? The Articles of Confederation. Where, what was the unit? That. So they, they sat as delegates from delegations. But what Christie has done is extract four people, in particular, from the delegations to make them super delegates. And one of the things I invite teachers and students of all levels, and I consider myself to be a student, that is, when you read Madison's notes, The Ultimate Objective, when you read it, do you think this interpretation of what went on is accurate, and how accurate? And of what importance is it? Um, well, I've just read, I just read a piece in a conservative magazine that says we should not be celebrating September the 17th. I thought, whoa, this is, uh, this is interesting. Conservatives saying not to celebrate September the 17th. I've heard uh, over the last two, three years, people on the left saying we shouldn't celebrate September the 17th because of fill in the blank. But conservatives arguing we shouldn't do it? And the answer is because four people at the convention had this superpower and really laid the groundwork for the progressive agenda and the, and the Obama administration. <laughs> And we would have been much better off in you know, the Articles of Confederation. Now, that surprised me. Coming, a critique from the left concerning racism, sexism, whateverism, of victimizationism is, is clear. But now that I'm seeing conservatives, conservative thinkers, starting to turn on the Constitution, and who are the four villains? These four. So we're getting, today, I'm not here to... to take one possession. What I'm trying to get at is sooner or later, the Constitution is going to be invoked. The more you know about its origins and what went behind it and the various ways, the better off you are as public policy students. Never mind being citizens. But here, you've got two delegates who are together in their delegation. And they happen to be Sherman of, uh, and, and Johnson. Johnson and Sherman. And Again, it's difficult to interpret interpretation, but you can see crumpled paper on the floor. And to me, that implies, here are the four heroes. 
here are the two people who attempted to be part of the game, but they really weren't part of the game. They lost, or there's a couple of paper on the floor. Now, I would again ask you, as you go through the convention of Madison's notes, to what extent do you agree that Sherman and Johnson, and there's another one called Ellsworth, who left early, to what extent are these folks from Connecticut simply frustrated chaps who didn't, who, who, whose voice was not heard? And the more you think about that, it seems to me, the more I hope you will come to the notion that this is, and I say it unapologetically, this is a democratic gathering with a small d, democratic gathering. Never before in the history of the world had did, have you had a founding, a framing, architects, framers, designers get together in multiple numbers from a vast variety of areas. That's the pluribus. All framers in the past have been one, Solon, Theseus, Romulus. Well, there's this little problem with about uh, Remus, we took care of that. But all of them have been single framers. Never before have you had multiple framers. Democratic in that sense. Uh, but not democratic by our standards. Listen, we're talking about roots. We're not talking about the full tree. Where do you start? Where do you start this process? Do you read history backwards or do you read history forwards? I happen to think that you should read history forwards. I also happen to think very often that historians cheat on time by, by precisely taking the lens of today and going back and asking perhaps the wrong question. They're, the question they're going to ask they, 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 is, what can I teach James Madison? And my approach is, what can James Madison teach me? And the answer is, I've got to listen, I've got to look, I've got to be aware of things. All right, that's one way. The first way, then, is the visual way, getting into the event itself through the idea of a signing. Wait, I can go off, I'm not. Way number two, if we were to go back to the main, is something I've put together over the last couple of years, and it is artistic interpretations. So now we're getting into not an in-depth approach through one of the most famous, but not, not seen in public paintings, David Christie, to a whole series. And what I've managed to discover over the years is one, two, three, four, coming down, five, six, I think it's nine. No, there are nine renditions. Interesting. Between, between 1787 and 1850s, there was no commemoration of the Constitutional Convention. There were paintings of the Declaration of Independence, the Congress Hall, Trumbull. But somehow, right around the Civil War, interest really kicked in about the Constitution. And in the 19th, if you, yeah, let's just go into this one, the Faulkner one. Right around exactly the same time that Christie was painting the signing that's hanging in the Capitol, Barry Faulkner was painting this. And this probably is the most observed rendition of the, of the founding. Uh, most observed in the sense of live. Uh, certainly I would suggest that's the case if you take a look at the number of children. Are we there yet? Kind of approach here. I'm standing outside the National Archives building trying to get in. The National Archives was opened in the 1930s. One of a number of, of uh, projects from the Great Depression which, not, which not only tried to build up, quote, a bridge to the future, San Francisco Bridge, whatever, but also a bridge with the past. And this bridge with the past was the National Archives. And as you go into the National Archives, on the left-hand side is Barry Faulkner's rendition of the Declaration of Independence. Then in the middle, you've got the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the Declaration. As you turn, you've got this. But notice the difference. The difference here is that they're all outside. And togas. And it's almost like that. This is part of the origin of the framers as demigods. 
And you can say, why is it so classical? Whereas the Christie painting seems to present 